Welcome to Cap Academy. In this video, we're going to go over a single full contour crown design. When you first open up Dental Designer, it'll drop you off at the insertion direction step. It always comes up with an insertion direction by default, and it'll also highlight any areas that happen to be undercut in these red highlights. The default insertion direction is usually pretty good, but if you do need to make any adjustments, you can use these arrow keys to adjust the angle, and you'll see the red undercuts change. Or, if you can find a good view from the occlusal view, you can hit the set button to change the insertion direction to wherever you were looking from at the time. It's okay to leave behind undercuts as long as they aren't directly on the margin line, since all of these red areas are going to be automatically blocked out. As long as the margin line is free of those red highlights, we'll continue next. It'll come up with a margin line automatically as well, and it usually does an okay job as long as the die has been ditched a little bit. To adjust the margin line, you can do single clicks to, uh, to make a quick change, or you can hold down the left click button to draw a new line. So I'll just go around making some adjustments. I usually like to look at the die in a profile view. That way it's a little bit easier to see the height of contour of the margin. At any time, you can right click directly on the margin to get out of this fast edit spline mode. When you're out of that fast editing mode, all of these dots will appear which you can simply drag and drop around. I usually won't use this tool extensively, but it can be useful to get some, uh, some detail on a specific part of a margin. If you need to get out of that mode, just simply right click on the line again and check the fast edit spline back on. We'll continue next until we get to the die interface step, which is where the software is going to apply the cement gap settings. As long as your doctor isn't requesting a slightly tighter or looser fit than normal, you can usually leave these at the default settings and continue next into the design stage. Keep in mind for this crown design, we're going to be going over the workflow that I happen to find to be a fast way of designing single crowns. Any of the tools you see me using, you can use in any order. The first thing I'll usually do is take a look and see where the crown has been placed. A lot of the times it'll be like this, where it's at a kind of slightly strange angle, and it's connected to the margin. So the first thing I'm going to do to fix that is just simply hit the undo button, which should disconnect the crown from the margin. Now that the crown is no longer attached to the margin, I'll then go to the smile library area so I can pick a different anatomy library. You can left click on any of these options to pick and choose and preview different options for libraries, and just choose one that you think best matches the adjacent teeth, or what the doctor is asking for. After making your choice of library, you can hit the OK button. And the next tool that I would try out is the Auto Placement tool. With this tool, it should automatically reposition the crown for us. Sometimes it won't always do the best job with this placement, but if it does work, it'll save you a good amount of clicks. So I always give it a shot. 
and if I happen to not like it, all it means is I'll just hit the undo and move on to one of our other tools. If the auto position didn't work, I could use this transformation tool to adjust the size of the unit with the green sliders, the rotation with the red sliders, or the angle of the side with the yellow sliders. So I'll continue and move this into position, just switching between a buckle, profile, and occlusal view to get this crown lined up with the other teeth. Once it's mostly in position, it doesn't have to be perfect, I should be ready to reconnect this to the margin line. For that, I'll go to where it says connection to margin line, and then hit the play button to use that tool. We should see it adapt the new crown position to the margin, and then we can move on to one of our following tools. Before we do that, I'm going to turn on some of the sliders on the top right. I want to have the red die or minimum thickness slider on, so I'm aware of any thin spots, and the collision line slider on, so I'm aware of where my contact points are. And the next tool I'm going to use is the tweezer icon, or the morphing tool. With this tool, you can simply grab different parts of the anatomy and move them around. Like, I can raise these marginal ridges, adjust the cusps, or adjust the profile of the unit by grabbing the bold edges, and just continue and make big changes to different sections of the anatomy. With this tool, I'll typically use a very large circle size so that I don't have a likely a chance of distorting the anatomy. You can also hold down the shift key to move multiple of these points at once. For example, I can grab these cyan dots and hold down shift to move all of the occlusal pits at once. Once I've finished adjusting the anatomy with this tweezer tool, I'll move on to one of our automatic tools to set up the function of the crown. That's under this little joystick icon called Contacts and Smoothing. In here, I'm only going to use three of these automatic tools. The first one is going to be the Minimum Thickness tool which for zirconia I do want set to 0.6 millimeters. When you hit the play button, it'll automatically fill in any thin spots that are left over. After that, I'll use the desired distance to antagonist tool. Right now it's set to 0.2 millimeters, which means it'll be 0.2 millimeters open from the occlusion. This will vary depending on your doctor's preferences, but you'll hit play and it'll automatically reduce your occlusion. The last tool that I'll use is the distance to neighbors tool. This I'll usually leave set to a negative 0.05 value, but most labs will narrow this down to whatever setting they prefer after they get a couple cases back. Now that I've set all of my contacts and thicknesses, the next tool I'm going to use is the spray can icon, or the wax knife tool. This is where you have your simple addition, reduction, and smoothing tools. Usually the only things I always do is a little bit of smoothing. The areas I want to smooth out are the areas immediately underneath my neighboring contacts just to make sure that there's nothing that would get in the way of the seating of the crown. You also want to do a little bit of smoothing all the way around the margin, since sometimes there will be ridges left behind from when the tooth was connected to the margin. Other than that, this is also where I would make any final touch-ups to the anatomy. 
either using the plus or minus tools to recontour or adjust the anatomy, or to smooth away things like this cusp of carabelli. Once you've finished making any final touch-ups, you can continue next, and it'll save your design. As long as it says Design Completed and Saved at the bottom, it should be ready to go.